and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is me, DCT. Welcome back, he people, to the DCT Lounge live on TalkShoe.com. Thank you once again for listening to me, Duke CT. I want to thank you all for coming in and having a good old time with me. And I'm I'm happy that you're hopefully having a good time. I'm still recovering. I just got, you know, I'm feeling a little, you know, under the weather. Some mixed with cold flu, some like mixed with an actual cold. So, um, yeah, if I sound a little worse for wear, it's because of that. So, I got this cold thing I'm doing, but I'm getting through it. I'm still working. I'm still grinding. I got other videos I got to upload, other stuff for MAGFest. I got to do my highlight video. I hopefully get all that stuff done by tonight, Saturday, going into so I'm. <coughs> <coughs> Yes, as you see, I'm still not out of what you have to cold, but hopefully by Monday, I will be, by Groundhog's Day, I will be fresh as a daisy and feeling a lot better than what Jeff Hardy is doing right now on Destination Impact Wrestling Live or whatever. Yeah, I'm watching both. I am a multitasking, oh, Abyss with Janice over here. And a monster's ball, which is not bad, but yeah. Uh, but anyway, well, what is the big topic is going on here, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, and by the way, I'm looking at Twitter with the real, uh, real full, uh, uh, you know, full killer, uh, <clears throat> with full killer, ninety nine with the real FK nine. He says this, which I one hundred percent agree. Hate to say it, but TNA has done so many monsters balls, monsters balls in the last year or so. I'm gonna get desensitized, desensitized to them. True. Ah, uh, yes. Anyway, man. Um, what about the? Well, back to something else. Um. How about the Royal Rumble, boys and girls? Holy crap, what a mess. I watched for pieces, bits and pieces, um, on my cell phone uh, at MAGFest, which, uh, by the way, if I didn't tell you, it was fun. What a great experience. There were so many cool people there. Awesome people. I love them. I love them to death. Think it was great and awesome. And I wish there was a way we could all hang out without waiting the whole year so. Yeah, and by the way, they're having a little thing on uh, MAGFest, uh, I think on their Facebook. Oh, what date should we do? Like, I'm like, January, I'm like, January. And it's, I mean, personally, if they try to go somewhere else, I, I mean, I would still go, but I won't be staying there. Because I just don't really, really, you know, personally, I, I, I really... Um, I just honestly, um, I, I love MacFest, but Jan early January is perfect for me. It's, that to me is a sweet spot right there. Seven, January 7th and 10th would be perfect. It's great. It's early January, not so early and everything else. Meanwhile, you have the entire revolution getting knocked down by the Hardys or what have you. But Anyway, you have a best doing this stick, you know, all this other stuff. Well, I'm going to keep going off on these tangents. Um, you know, I'm here hoping they stay in January um, because I think it'll be great. Um, I think it'll be just a perfect day. Yeah, it's something, oh, we should do one more week after. Catchicon? No. Just no. I think no one, I don't think people will like that. I think, I think honestly, 7 to 10 is the perfect sweet spot for everybody. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Perfect. You get money and everything else. So, yeah. I think, um, yeah, it's a better thing. Yeah, January 7th, that's my post for the day, for MacFest. I, I, that would be even perfect thing. Someone say, oh, God, I'm solid week. I can't handle that, man. I can't handle that. No, 
Smash that for a week, though. No, I can't. They ain't got time for that. Too much. Oh, by the way, Jeff Hardy wins in a pointless monsters ball. Eh, who cares? I just don't care at all. Anyway, um, back to what I was going to talk about. The WWE Monday Night Raw, or the WWE's War Rumble. Well, honestly, first off, the title match, I loved the title match. I thought it was great. The Triple Threat title match was great. I really loved it. All three competitors, Brock, Cena, and Rollins, had, was great. I really thought it was great. I loved the everything Rollins did with Cena was perfect, and I loved it. I think it was great. And... But I got to talk about the Royal Rumble and match itself. Now, the match, I always think it's really hard to judge a match because it's all about, it's a good clack cluster F, and you can't really do anything in there. Just you barely get moves and just knocking someone off the top rope. It's usually basically the last guys in there that really make a difference. That's all, you know, that's what usually it is. But this Royal Rumble did... Did the WWE wet the bed? Yes. They wet the bed really badly because they want to set up Roman Reigns to be strong. And I get that. Roman Reigns should have been. They want to set up Austin, but they did it very piss poorly. He had Big Show and <coughs> Kane knocking people out, knocking favorites out. Everyone, you know, Dolph Ziggler, Ryback, uh, Bray, Wyatt, all of them just really lifeless things, just locking them out and just throwing them out of Rumble. And by the way, Daniel Bryan was there, and they eliminated him early with, with the Bray Wyatt thing, um, you know, which they're trying to build up to fight the Undertaker, which I'm like, no, it means nothing. And honestly, the match is going to be even worse with Brock Lesnar. My God, you think Brock Lesnar versus the uh, Undertaker was bad? What against Bray Wyatt, who honestly needs the right type of guy to work with, versus a guy who just, I, I don't want him to wrestle, man. Dude was, got carried off in the ambulance. If you watch WWE 24-7, dude was covered up in the ambulance. He, he left in an ambulance. The Undertaker left in an ambulance. He, he, I honestly think that she should have just let leave and never wrestle again. I don't want to see The Undertaker come back because The Undertaker should not come back at all for his own health. I don't want to see him get like, you know, you know next thing you know, he gets in, you know, bam, he, he can't walk again. I mean, seriously, I think that would be great. I, if we keep, I don't want him to get that. I don't want to see him wrestle again. I think it's best for him, and it's honestly best for business, if Bray, you know, they just say, don't take this fade away into nothingness or something like that. And, you know, that sort of thing. <clears throat> but that's just my personal opinion. But back to the match itself. It not, didn't do Roman any favors by just letting him, you know, he eliminated both Big Show and uh, Kane, but the, both of them came back and beat the crap out of him, and then he had The Rock. Honestly, The Rock had, and honestly, so many memes were based off this, I, and if you watch the video portion of this, I will be showing you all the memes that basically had Roman Reigns. Basically, you had to have The Rock save him, and The Rock... The great one couldn't get him getting people to cheer him. And they, I mean, seriously, they couldn't do anything else. And then you have Rusev, who was knocked down for like for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Probably got a good old nap. Took a little nap down in the bottom ring. He was knocked down. You know, never was eliminated. And then next year, oh, he gets uh, a point of elimination as Reigns gets spears him and then toss Rusev out of the, uh, of the ring. And him submitting, uh, you know, getting him, getting, because when Roman, when, um, when Rusev came back into the ring, Rusev came back in the ring, got speared, and then tossed out. That was it. So that huge spot there was completely pointless. They could have just eliminated both and had that same scene. I think I was just really wasting time. You know, it really does waste, it's waste a lot of time. It made, honestly, Roman Reigns look bad that he had to do it without help. This is a guy supposed to take on Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, who not only was with a was taken out majority of the triple threat match, who not only came back from a broken rib, came back swoop, suplexing everybody, 
F five and people, man looked like a freaking monster. And Reigns, he need he needed help from his cousin The Rock. The dude that got his ass killed by Brock Lesnar. Seriously. That that's to me very piss poor way to do it. <coughs> very piss um <clears throat> Very, very, very piss poor way to uh, set up someone, and and then you have this. Um, afterwards, it was people booing Jared. Okay, fine. You had the last war roll, which surprised the WWE did this again. Then you have the cancel hashtag cancel WWE Network, which I honestly could not believe this actually happened. I was like, holy crap, and. Oh, man, I was like, what? I couldn't believe this. I was like, man. Um, and in fact, I actually favored one treat from... Oh, I favored... Oh, gosh. Oh, goodness, I saved one of them. It's actually... And if you see this right now, I, I, I hope it, I love this one. You have Solid Snake as the rock holding up right in his hand. Oh, God, that this is beautiful. I love this one. Oh, man. And here's the thing. I, I actually got this. Um, I favored, and there's a lot of stuff on this, um, you know, something like this. Uh, very interesting stuff. It says, uh, Jim Sterling, the quotes on Twitter. It says, quote, uh, this is why I favored and saved for this well, podcast. So it says, <clears throat> Jim Sterling from the Jim Position quotes uh, from Twitter. The rage I'm seeing on Twitter reminds me why I stopped watching wrestling in the early 2000s. WWE just makes its viewers miserable. Uh, the real uh, fool killer. <clears throat> Hardly the reaction Vince wanted. I do feel bad for Reigns though. Not his fault that the WWE is so out of touch with their audience. Hashtag War Rumble. Uh, Three Black Geeks podcast right there. You know, shout out to the Three Black Geeks. Awesome podcast. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Says The Rock helping Roman Reigns is the W equivalent to Captain America punching his hit, punching Hitler. Law hashtag World Rumble, and I told him to use that. <laughs> but seriously, it, that's you know that to me is funny right there. Uh, PWF Charlie uh, right here says this. He says it sucks to be a fan of someone, see them some signs of improvement, and then put in a position to fail. Just depressing. And it's actually Movie Bob uh, came out here and said this. He says this, interesting, he says, Saul Roman Reigns in person at SummerSlam. I feel like he's wrestling Sam Worthington. Shit ton of actual charisma doesn't translate. And I think that actually fits. And honestly, right here, uh, Pat the NS Punk, Solomon MacFest, cool dude. Awesome dude. So says, anyway, <clears throat> for non-current wrestling fans, not sure why hashtag cancel WWE Network is trending, Imagine Andre the Giant versus Coco Beware instead of Hulk Hogan. Yeah. WrestleMania 3. The big moment. The big spotlight. So instead of Hulk Hogan, the immovable force versus the unmovable object, you say you got Andre the Giant versus Coco Beware. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would have been fun. Uh, yeah. But seriously, I love this one. I'm going to save this. It's forever. I love this. Oh, Jeff... Jeff Rollins, beautiful. I look at this. I just love this pick right here. Riding in silence. I just this is just beautiful. I love it. And I there's so many more. I just love that. Oh man. And right there. And I tell you. And um and I tell you, this response it did not go well. I mean, think about it. I mean, there were rumors, and of course, that the WWE said that, in fact, the WWE cancellation page, rumors that the cancellation page was crashed. I heard that was crashed, but it can't be the case. Says the w, They actually talked about it. Said the WWE spokesperson denied that the WWE network cancellation page crashed at any point over the weekend. That's pretty supporting the story and elsewhere. Any service failure experienced by users, including press author, well, because they overload on WWE's end, according to the company, WWE spokesperson also clarified there was no spike in the WWE Network cancellations following the World Rumble. Do I believe this? I'm like, uh, I'm okay. 
I'm okay with that. I'm like, oh, I I think maybe, but I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if this is true or not, but I wouldn't be surprised that maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But honestly, when the kind of hashtag cancel WWE Network is, well, you know, trending, Oh, man. That's not good. No, seriously. It's not good at all. It's not good at all. I mean, that's not a good thing. And, and to me, when you have that tra- hashtag trending, that's a negative thing in private for deaths in the company. And you would like to say, oh, my goodness. Uh, is, is this going to be a... A new thing. This is terrible, you know. Oh my gosh! And then you have add on to the fact that you know even this uh, Forbes article, which I'm looking at, says this response is clearly not reacting just to world almost booking, but also months of stale, repetitive, outright boring programming that the WWE has been putting out recently. Yet, what might have been more surprising than the, than Philly's hostile reaction is that the company has been thriving throughout 2014 and appears to be still trending upwards. That's the thing, is that they're still still trending upwards in the whole and making more money via chances of WWE Network. Which recently, boys and girls, the WWE Network hit 1 million subscribers. Yes, the WWE Network hit 1 million subscribers. Amazing, huh? That's, um, wow. A lot of it's stuff saying, you know... Um, I'm like, you know, I was surprised by this, but how is this a million subscribers? Is it really one million? Is it just one million? This, that, the other. Well, I take a good look of, um, of, um, um, of the whole, you know, uh, this, that, the other. And it seems to actually, that the reason how it got over one million subscribers is because of the um, the reason why I paid so much was because you know the uh, the out overseas because right now in the WWE you know, right now it is uh, Americans the United States the main stuff. Um, You know, you know, is actually, uh, you know, you know, it was mainly this. I mean, the W number surrounds hitting one million subscribers is honestly still one of the most positive because the majority, again, the majority of the money went to, you know, majority of the uh, subscribers went to like the UK, all these other stuff, which finally got the network. So that pushing them over the top to one million. Because here in this country, here was eight hundred and I think seventy six thousand. Here uh, in the United States, and in here in the United States, eight hundred seventy six thousand. Overseas, the total was one hundred and twenty, one hundred and twenty six thousand. So add that total up, it's a million uh, plus barely. So yeah. If they got the million uh, subscribers, which, you know, that's a good thing to keep their business running because this is going to be the future, which I think is going to be something really, really important, something really needs to pop. We need to have a, a new, uh, they need something because this is what the future of television is going to be, but not yet. Um, I Because I, I think that's million will be fleeting because they are offering another free month of subscribe, subscriptions next month, I mean, in February, and after the February, next month of February, um, how many of them, and uh, for WrestleMania, how many of them are going to actually uh, be, 
uh, you know, in the, uh, <coughs> how many of them are actually going to stay? How many? I like it and stay and watch all this stuff um, for myself, but what are the chances of the WWE network subscribers or anyone in WWE Universe staying on to be subscribers for the long run? A lot of them did stay, and I don't see how many of them is going to be. Because, hey, most of them are still staying around for a while. This is their big sell month. To me, where are going to be um, where is the um, where is going to be the subscriber network the network count is going to be when the subscribe when when I keep on here is when when the subscriber uh, count is going to um, you know Stable, be stable for one million. Uh, they need to, they need to average one point five million subscribers to make even, and two point five million subscribers every year. I mean, a year to make money from this. Where are they going to come out to? Because let's be one hundred percent honest. I don't see the WWE Network continuing to have a million subscribers a year. I see them finding some very mean, lean months. I think they're going to get to a million and then regress back to maybe 75,000, which is not bad, but I think over 750,000 a year, maybe 800,000, 900,000, because people are going to be like, oh, this is great. It's a new thing for the UK and everything else, but when that novelty does wear off, how many people are going to stay? And people, when I look at this, um, which honestly... I look at this, Forbes looks like it again, which I believe is something it's new. I think that's the reason why. I think the reason why, it, to me, it's still it's new, it's exciting, and all this stuff. When that newness goes away, are they going to be around like Netflix or are they going to be like with Tout, which started off fast, but, you know, people don't use Tout no more. They use Instagram and... And it just fades away to obscurity. I want to see if this thing can last long. Last long and long. Me being last. Could say okay it's been a year. Let's see if they can actually do something more with this. Because I think. Yeah it was. Even though people. And I think this come in this thing right here. Is the WWE's terrible content. Even still. Um. Uh, Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, people bitch about it, but at the end of the day, people still watch. That's the thing, is people still watch the content, they still do it, is that um, a lot of people, they don't care about the, they look for casual fans, and the casual fans eat this crap up, and, you know, they don't care about the, the smarts, they always are coming there because they like the NXT Network and everything else. That's what it is, and people who really do want, I mean, and I think it's in the mindset of fans that if they kill off the WWE, nothing's going to... I think that's the thing. It's the mindset of that, which I don't believe so. I think it's just, um, you know, I think it's a really idiotic type uh, send-up. But I think at the end of the day, I feel that the WWE can... I think, you know, people, they can lose what they uh, have done. I think when you look at other stuff like, say, you know, Lucha Underground or Ring of Honor or whatever. They just need the opportunity to shine, which I think they can. They can lose that sizable audience if, you know, there was actually a good counter-program. That's what's killing wrestling right now. There is no counter-program. And fans seem like this is it. From little kids to this, this is what wrestling is, which I don't believe is so. And um, I'm, Maybe I'm ranting here. Maybe I'm going crazy, but... I still believe, maybe I'm not, but I still think there is, when there is a truly alternative, that's when the WWE will add it, get, um, people will start to actually say, you know, maybe it's time for us to really look and try to get better, because right now, it just seems to me, people are saying, oh, it was all part of a plan. See, Vince knows what he's doing, he got the response, so at the end of the day, it seems like, so you want people, majority of people, think that Vince is basically out of touch, old, and basically senile to take the guy who is so weak that can't even defeat Big Show and Kane, 
like how Brock Lesnar easily took down Kane and Big Show. In fact, how with a broken rib basically took down both of the top competitors in the WWE after, I mean, before the Royal Rumble, he took down with a broken rib both Seth Rollins and John Cena, suplexing and destroying them all, like F5ing all the way in Roman Reigns. He has a spear, got himself bloody, and get, I mean, needed his, um, his cousin help or something to knock, to, to basically um, help him out to to win the War Rumble to save his ass, getting his ass whooped. Which honestly doesn't make you know just really doesn't make him look strong. This is the guy you're gonna have him face at WrestleMania, and <laughs> people say, well, they they need some for WrestleMania. Well, they got their hook for WrestleMania. Yeah, it's look. I honestly think rest, this match between Lesnar and um. Roman Reigns, I think it's probably going to be the worst main event match. If you want to bitch about Miz and Cena, and trust me, I bitch about that too. That Miz and Cena from WrestleMania 27 is going to look like freaking... Um, it's going to look like... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's going to look like... Uh, Macho Man versus Ultimate Warrior compared to what that debacle is going to be because Reigns is damn sure not ready to face uh, is damn sure not ready to face uh, Lesnar one one he's damn sure not ready to face any of these guys and and if you think Wrestlemania is not going to, to boo Roman Reigns out they better have a change they better have um, Seth Rollins come out and cast the money in the bank thing in. That is what it's going to do. They need to actually do that. They need to. They need. I think that's what's going to happen. Or, or God forbid, he's going to be booed out there. That's going to make John Cena blush. And it, I mean, they can save him. I don't know how they're going to do it, but I just think Roman Reigns needs some more seasoning. And that's why I always think he's. I think he's good. I think he needs more seasoning. I think he needs more seasoning. I think he should have put the Intercontinental and U.S. Championship on him. I think they need to have done that and put some more seasoning on him because if they do this, I think he's going to be just like Sheamus. The guy put the belt on too quickly, and what happened? What what happened to him? Where where is he? Where's Sheamus? Remember him? Yeah, he, he, he's the most irrelevant character now. And that is where he's on. He's not on the John Cena path. Roman Reigns is on the Sheamus path. And trust me when I tell you, folks, you don't want to be on that path. Multiple championships and not really credible. And completely and utterly interchangeable with any other guys. And they still have to rely on John Cena. And honestly, they can't do that anymore. Because if they continue to do that, you're going to see some. You're going to see the WWE going to completely not only fall apart. Because they do, they need bigger. They need a, they need a face. I don't know if it's Daniel Bryan because ratings do drop when he's on the, the screen. Um, they, they, they need somebody. Ambrose can be that guy. Can Seth Rollins be that guy? Can Reigns uh, pack it up and actually be that guy? I don't know. But the WWE, right now, they're looking great. And it's funny because, again, the terrible, content, the terrible content, the bad stuff has not slowed it down. But I think a lot of people, including myself, who are participants of the WWE Network, um, we have to have a decision here because we're going to have a decision to make. Are we going to be happy with the content of the old stuff? And also the nice little reality stuff like WWE 24-7. Or uh, WWE 24-7. And all that type of stuff. Are we going to take that away? Are we going to... <coughs> Uh, with NXT and everything else, are we going to have to say, okay, this is great. This is what we want to pay for. We want to support. 
But also, we have to realize that to support this crap and this garbage. What are we going to have, the people who order the WWE Network are going to have to make a personal choice that with us buying the network, we are okaying this. We are okaying bad booking decisions. We are okaying uh, the WWE Divas being booked like complete and utter garbage. Looks like, uh, to me, really honestly, we're talking about misogyny and such. Look at how the WWE Divas are treated on NXT, and look at them treated in the main show. It's night, night and day. God damn. Fuck you, WWE, and fuck you, Total Divas, and fuck you, reality shows. God damn. And you know, and hopefully, I'm, and I'm happy that the trend is dying, and I hope it dies, and I hope it takes Total Divas and a stupid, moronic, racist, sexist bullshit goes around with it. I'm tired of that shit. But that's just my personal opinion. Maybe I'm just wrong. But I just I'm just I'm just frustrated at that point. And but you know what? I realize it's gonna be a choice we gotta make and say that are we okay for paying this content for the good stuff? For the past and all the interesting programs and the documentaries that we produces and NXT for for stuff like Roman Reigns winning the world, Rumble has half past the league, um, it is, and you know how you know it is, and I think we gotta look at what Shackle Daddy is saying and such. And what a way to hurt the WWE is not by yelling or doing hashtags, which I think is such we need to be true. Um, we need to have action behind these words. Hashtag cancel W Network may be somewhat in ways of awareness, but we, the people who made that hashtag actually have to go through a cancel. I mean, they should have had a mass cancel. I'm talking maybe 10, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50,000, 60, 70, 80,000, I mean, maybe over 200,000 to really fix this, but yet they didn't. They just they put a hashtag up and they're still holding that work. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like that that's really needs to change. And if that doesn't change, this you know we need to have real consequence. If the WWE doesn't want to change, and we and we don't allow it to actually change and actually make good, you know we're, we're culpable. We are responsible for this. And honestly, we had to make a decision. Is NXT and everything else worth it? Is it worth it to see this horrific booking? Is it going to be worth it? That is my question is. If it's worth it for you, then hey, continue to have the WWE Network. But if it's not worth it to you, we got to look and say, you know this is good. We, we are born to be punishing. NXT and all the docu- all the hard work for the WWE Network. We're going to be punishing that. It is for the greater good in some aspect for the WWE to start actually, you know, doing right. Actually booking better, making better booking decisions. <coughs> Sorry, again, sick. But you know what I'm saying. That is what I'm going to be putting there for you. I want to ask that question for you before I uh, go. Anyway, well, this has been a short show. Uh, anyway, this is uh, Duke CT here. Peace and love. I'll see y'all when I see y'all next week. Uh, we'll be here same time, same Duke CT channel. And um, same time, same Duke CT channel, and and everything else will be made sure that uh, uh, you know everything is uh, worked out, everything is uh, awesome. That's the uh, hope, and that's everything we need to do. Um, Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you much for being a part of the show. 
Remember, comment, rate, subscribe, and all that great stuff here on YouTube, Zitcast, and whatever I'm posting next. Uh, thank you once again for being a part of the BCT Lounge. And we'll be right back next week, hopefully, with my reviews, my 25th review, and other MacFest related goodies. So, uh, catch y'all later, and uh, peace.